All right, what's up, guys? Back here on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. And uh, we're talking about Kentucky finally getting to the finish line on their their coaching search. But uh, we'll see how the reaction is. Well, I, I can tell you how the reaction is. I already see it in the comments. Some of you were chiming in last night whenever we put this up. So <laughs> we, have, we have plenty of uh, reaction already uh, to go through. But before we jump into everything, let's quickly tell you, as always, about our friends at Bet Online, uh, your number one source for summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Uh, get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to Bet Online today uh, or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Go website, mobile, either way. Check it out. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right. Here we go. <laughs> what you've been waiting for? Thoughts on. Mark Pope, who will be the new head coach at Kentucky. He is one that I think when we did the Cal to Arkansas thing, we started talking about Kentucky candidates. And I think his name came up, but I think we all sort of basically said, I don't think it ever gets to that point. I think there were too many candidates in front of him, seemingly. Now, again, we don't know, well, we do know now who they did and did not reach out to, at least for the most part. And yet, here we are. Like, he is the guy that um, is getting the job, Max. And so, initial thoughts. Uh, my goodness, some of the comments I'm reading here are just incredible. But y you give your, your thoughts, and then we'll we'll dive more into it. Yeah, the comments are already heating up here. We're one minute in. Um, I'm not going to lie. My first, my first reaction was, uh, well, I was shocked. Um, but... I just I was like, let me just take a night to sleep on it and just calm the initial reactions. I woke up and I honestly the first thing I did was I went on all the social media to like almost expect like uh well now they're backtracking kind of like announcement. Like I almost like refused to believe it initially and it had finally now sinking in. Um Well, we got a lot to talk about, Blake. Put it that way. Um, Can we just start with the obvious one? I mean, which, what's let's, that? let's just let's just get this out of the way because I know this is what everyone and this is the first thing we texted about whenever it happened. I'm like, if you're gonna understand the frustration from Kentucky fans, if we're gonna start with the potential negatives here, um, we try to be optimistic and we will give you our optimistic side shortly. But if you do want to start with the the pessimistic side and say, why will this not work? Well, yep. the first thing that Kentucky fans are going to look at this and say, yes, he's our guy. He's a he's a Kentucky guy, all this. But the fact is, we know why they wanted John Calipari gone. There were probably multiple reasons, but the main reason was the fact that there was no NCAA tournament momentum. They had not built any momentum in terms of getting where they wanted to go in the tournament, right? And so at, now you go to a coach that, in, has been a head coach for, what, nine seasons? I think that's right. Um, Utah Valley, BYU, correct, Max? I think it's nine. Yeah, Utah Valley for four, BYU for five. This this past season was his, was his ninth year of coaching, yep. going on to 10th. So has does not have an NCAA tournament win to his credit yet, and I think that is the one right. thing where you're going to look at this and say that's the whole reason we felt like the Cal move was good for us because – you know, it was one where, again, we, we said relationship was toxic, all the other things that we've already talked about. But now you're going to get a guy who I think look, his best team, there wasn't a tournament that year when it got canceled. So let's give him, in fairness to him on that, they may have won a tournament game or two that year. But I think the optics of it are certainly going to be the frustrated fan base who wants to win now and wants to get beyond the second round of the NCAA tournament that past history is not there, right? And so that is going to be, that's going to be your first mark, I think, for a lot of, boy, that was not pun intended, but like that's going to be the first thing that people are going to look at and say, all right, how is this an upgrade? How is this going to put us in a better position other than it just being a reset from John Calipari? And I think that's, it's a fair question based on that, but I would also say, you know, it's also a situation where Utah Valley stayed and, um, BYU, not not Kentucky, and he'll certainly have plenty of resources to be successful. But I understand the frustration with that aspect alone because it felt like that was what 
drove the decision for a lot of people. So, yeah. Um, starting with the, because I do have some optimism, Blake. I do, as I always try to. Um, I understand all of the the fan reaction and frustration, and it's not because, it, obviously, as you just said, like there's the the question marks with Pope in the postseason and and th- that unproven stuff. Um, but it's more so just because of what the what we were looking at like two days ago. Like we were looking at like national champ Scott Drew, who has been top 25 in Ken Palm like to tell I can remember. Um, you're looking at like Dan Hurley, like the greatest coach I've witnessed with my eyeballs running – run an offense that looks like a jigsaw puzzle. And then we're at Pope. So that's why I think it's just a a little bit of a letdown because we were looking at proven winner, proven winner, proven national champ, pro- back-to-back national champ. And then and then Pope. Now here's my here's my biggest concern. Mark Pope's quad one record at at BYU 17 and 30. Um for reference, like Scott Drew was 50 and 29 over the same the same time period. Um, and then my so obviously there's the there's the big win concerns. That's going to be the number one question. It's warranted. Um, but also, if you look at I've seen some people compare to Dan Hurley and I know Dan Hurley had a, a tournament win or two, um, but it's not like he was lighting the world on fire at Rhode Island. You know, that was kind of a risky hire for UConn. I know we're in different different landscapes but still they took a chance and it worked out um the other thing that i'm like a little bit worried about is is recruiting and i know you you wanted to touch on that a little bit blake just kind of like i mean he's been in utah for the past for the past nine years um you know how is that going to translate over you can look at it both angles you can say is he going to be able to recruit or you can say well, look what he did at BYU with those recruits. Give him these resources at Kentucky, and you can start to see. Well, well, hey, maybe, maybe with that offense, and you give him some five stars, and and maybe Reed Shepard comes back, and this could be an insane offense. There's a lot. There's a lot to pull on. There's a lot to pull on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we have, we certainly have to play to two different audiences here because, uh, as pointed out by by Chad here like not everyone is unhappy with this hire I know it might seem this mm-hmm. way like it's the nature of the online world these days like it's just easy to get wrapped up in all the the, the negativity right away um but yeah like not everyone is unhappy about this hire there are plenty of people that will look at it and say all right he's a Kentucky guy won a championship here understands the expectations of the program better than you know anybody because he he has been in this grind before as a player um, all that stuff, right? And so I, I think it is important to to look at that and remember that. But I I think at the same time, again, like you said, there are going to be plenty of people on the other side of this thing that say, well, uh, I, I'm just so frustrated now that yeah. I just want to win and I just want to win now. And, you know, we talked about like there, there are some people that probably feel like this is one that maybe it takes several years to get going. But I think as we've said many times, like, I don't think that's the plan here. Like, I, I don't feel like this is a, hey, let's give him three or four years and let's see what happens. I mean, that that is probably the, the one that I'm looking at and saying, hmm, I feel like for Kentucky fans, yes, this is a good hire. But what happens if they have a good season and get ousted in the first round of the tournament? What does the conversation become immediately? And we talked about, like, the pressure that – you know, that, that was already going to be on Cal this year and what probably would have been the most pressure packed season of his entire career, knowing that it had gotten to this point. So I'm curious with Kentucky fans. So is this where, is this a point? And there are plenty of you in the, in the chat here. So I'm, I'm curious, is this a point where you're okay to basically say, we're going to hit reset for a second. If he doesn't get us to the sweet 16 or beyond this year or next year, is that acceptable? Because I think that's the question I have. Uh, is it okay? He's a Kentucky guy. We'll give him time, and that's fine. But I'm, but we know like it was the complete opposite with Cal, and understandably so because this had been going on for so long. So now, is it a hit reset? We'll give him time to have success, even if that's not this year, two years, three years from now. 
because I tend to think that's not the case for most people. I think that it's he's expected to come in in the transfer portal era with NIL. And somebody pointed out earlier, he's going to get plenty of NIL support well, because I cut you off right there, Blake. Yeah, go ahead. We got a we had a tweet from Matt Jones five minutes okay. ago. Sorry, go ahead. Confirmed by two sources, they already have four million pledged in NIL. Yeah, for, so for already four mil. Well, but see, that is so that to me only intensifies the situation to where yeah. that means you better go out and get a team this off season that can win the sec can, you know, get to a sweet 16 or beyond. And so that that's all I'm just, Hey, I'm just asking questions here. So I, I don't know. I think you'll have a mix in terms of the reaction to that. I think there'll be a lot of people who will want to say it is a new era where you're able to flip your team every single season. So the expectation should be, he should come in and have a team this year that can, get us beyond what John Calipari got us to. And again, at the same time, you know, it is, it's, it's just a, it's looking at the history and understanding also why people would be hesitant and wondering if that's going to happen, but yeah. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Here's a, yes, I wanted to bring this up and I'm glad, glad EJ, I'm glad we, we got this comment. Oh, Y'all we remember, remember EJ. <laughs> I was talking about Blake. I this morning I was talking to him about it. Literally five minutes before we hit record. I was like, I'm my mind's I'm having trouble comprehending this. Um and it's kind of on the pessimistic side, but like people are acting like like BYU is just like some no name like I mean, I grew up on Jimmer. I would be in the driveway shooting hoops with my friends. We'd be saying Jimmer range. We wouldn't be saying LeBron range. It was Jimmer range. That's what I grew up on. I, I wanted Jimmer for that jerseys. Um, and so people are acting like Mark Pope's coming from like, like Daytona state division two, like B BYU is at what are they six straight tourneys from 07 to 12. I mean, that's, it's not like he's just, he's coming from, it was the WCC was Zags, BYU and St. Mary's top three every year. So, I mean, I don't know. I I just was – I was on Twitter last night. Just people are talking like BYU's just some schlump program. I'm like, what? I grew up on this team. Couldn't couldn't believe it. Well, I mean, as always, uh, it, it – we have to say this with it, but it's like you do have to let it play out. Like you have to see how it goes. But as someone said earlier, we got a million comments. If you want to make sure we get to your comment – Leave us a um, super chat because I definitely am not able to hold these the way we usually are, Max. But if you see any, just put them in there and we'll we'll get to them yeah. if we can. But um, I don't even know what I was going to say. Someone said it's really just going to come down to roster building. Like it's that's really what this this whole thing is. Like it is, if you have the NIL money, four million, whatever it is, you, then you have to be able to have a situation where you build that kind of team and and you're going to get that opportunity to do so. Like and so. That, that's it. Like, really, it, it, I think it's – Cal built teams that had talent, Max. That's the issue maybe for some people, and they, they still couldn't get to that next level. And so it's going to be curious to see exactly how this plays out um, and if Mark Pope is the guy to get him there because you brought up something I think that's always important in these coaching searches. Every single time you have a coaching search, and it always starts with who. It always starts with the biggest names that could possibly even entertain the idea of coaching yeah. your team. And it's Swing always going to feel like a letdown. <laughs> so when you're starting with guys like that and then you get here, it's always going to feel like a letdown in terms of comparison. But if you do just look at it, you know, as the coach that's coming in, you don't compare him to everyone else, then it makes sense, I guess. You can say, all right, this guy certainly can coach basketball. And as always, though, there's a lot more that comes along with being the Kentucky coach than just coaching basketball. But maybe, hey, he's willing to embrace that, and um, so we'll see. So, yeah, I mean, look, yeah. that's the thing, right? The <clears> tournament <throat> is uh, yeah. again only one team wins a national championship every year, uh, and it's probably gonna be UConn for the next decade. But um, you know, it's it's just a situation where, as we always say, four teams get to the final four, one team wins the championship, eight teams get to the elite eight, and there's three hundred and something teams playing, right? So, it it's not easy to do this, but at the same time, I also don't want to ignore that Kentucky fans should expect to get beyond the first and second round of the tournament. They should not feel like that is 
the the normal expectation. And that's why they were so frustrated with Cal. And if it's the same thing here, they're going to be just as frustrated. Whether it's Mark Pope, whether it's John Calipari, whether it's Max Barr, they're going to be frustrated no matter who the coach is. So I think that's also something to where it is very hard tournament-wise. But this is a program that has just – they feel like they they hit a wall and they want to be able to get beyond that. And you have to be able to do it at Kentucky. So – yeah, and not going to lie, I I kind of like Mark Pope for taking the job. Like, you got to have some stones to take this job right now. Not a lot of coaches want to take this job right now. I know it's – Cal Perry always says, like, hey, when Kentucky calls, you don't say no. Um, but there's a lot of pressure. There's a ton of intensity within the within the fan base. And Mark Pope, he he's not an old, old, old guy. He's on – he has social media. He knows what the the people are saying, and he's saying, "I don't care. I'll take the job anyway. Doubt me now, and I'll, I'll take it. Let's go." And and when he gets on his press conference, I'll tell you right now, I guarantee he's winning that press conference. He's a good talker. He's winning that press conference. I kind of he's got some stones for taking the job. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, just put it this way: if he say he comes in, because I'll, I'll I'll put it this way: adjusted offensive efficiency. Okay, but like. Past uh, five years at BYU, he's only had one year outside the top 50 in offense. Say he comes in, upgrade in, in, in athleticism, upgrade in every pretty much everything with the NIL and the resources at Kentucky. Coach is like a top 10 offense, and you're going to the Elite Eight. Now it looks like it's the best hire in, ever, in, genius hire. You know, so I'm like, I understand the frustration, but hey, this is where we're at now. Nothing we can do about it now. And, you know, let's give the guy a chance. See what he can do. Yeah. That's I mean, where I don't I'm have at. a choice. You don't, you don't have, have a choice, choice at this point. So you don't have a choice. That's the only option you have. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we are. And so, again, it's like you said, there there is a level of certainly confidence. If you're going to take the job, you have to know what you're going into. And, he is someone who understands that this is what Kentucky basketball is. And there were people I saw at least one comment streaming by. Um, he understands how to reconnect with the fans, probably. Like, that will be something that will be very important because you've lost a lot of fans over the past month. And I don't mean losing them as though they're never going to watch Kentucky basketball again. But that relationship is not there because, of the, like we said, the toxic relationship that had become yep. – Everybody in the way they viewed John Calipari, not everybody. I just said that. I realize not everyone viewed it that way. But I think that that's going to be important to, to now go out and have someone who can say, hey, I've been here before. I've won the thing that you want to win the most. Yep. And so I will build the plan to help us get there. That will give him time to do that. But like I said, it also is not 1996 where you know you have the same group of players for three or four years or whatever it was, you know, it's a different year now where expectation is every single year you have the resources and or whatever to be able to build a championship roster every season. And if one doesn't work out one season, then you better go out and fix it the next year. And I think everybody, it's pressure. There's more pressure on coaches now than ever because that is the case because you are knowing that you're not just necessarily, I don't know if held back is the right word, but like you're not locked into players for, a certain time period, right? I mean, you could sign a player today and they could transfer tomorrow. Like basically that's, that's kind of the way it works. Like you can say, Hey, this guy's going to join our roster today. He may practice tomorrow. And the next week he may be playing for another team. So, so you can change your roster at any time to try to build, you know, the way you need to, to win championships. But I think it's the first thing we do anytime a coaching hire is made is what we look at the past history. What has he done? And I said earlier, I think the frustration some fans are going to have, not everyone, if we're using a level head here, not everyone, it's going to be that he has no tournament wins. And that was the whole reason that John Calipari was, you know, became what he became in Lexington for for many people is because the number of wins were not there and it was not to the expectation of Kentucky, which I've said, I don't think it's realistic to win the national championship every single year. But for Kentucky – it is realistic to think that you should be able to get to the Sweet 16 and beyond every other year, maybe. 
every year, maybe. Like, I think those are realistic expectations. Even in a model like this where every roster is rebuilt each season, you should still have the expectation as the Kentucky basketball program that you can get beyond the first weekend of the tournament every year. If you want to say every other year, that's fine. You should be making a Final Four this many years out of this many. I don't think that's unrealistic. I think that's fair for a fan base that, again, has has the the claim to say we are one of the greatest basketball programs in the history of college. Like, that is the way it should be. And so, otherwise, that what are you going to do? If you start expecting less, well, then it's just okay to, to be a team that goes out and loses in the first round every year. So... Yeah, and I'm right now. I right, see. I'm already. I'm already jumping the gun. I'm already looking forward. Okay, I've all of my. I know the. If you want to vent and you want to get everything, oh, there's out, venting going on. Go ahead, get it <laughs> Hold out. Hold on, <laughs> let me pull this up from earlier. Where is it? Where are we um, got? Where are we at? Pete, <laughs> KSR meltdown, rough rafters, like every everything's just a complete meltdown. I'm sure right now. But well, you know. speaking of. KSR, the spaces last night, whoop, that that stuff should be behind a paywall first. That's the best free content you're going to find on the internet. Um, there was over like 25K people in that space. is just nuts. But Matt Jones did say, he said, Jeff Shepard and Mark Pope, they weren't only teammates. They were roommates, like the closest of close you can get. Um, I'm like, and so then I start thinking, start going, Hmm. Okay. If we get Reed Shepard back, fifty percent three point shooter, maybe he brings over Dallin Hall as a as an upperclassman who had over a thirty percent assist rate. I'm like, oh man. Okay. Now, oh, oh, we got four million already in NIL. Oh boy, this could be an offensive just masterpiece. And I start to get optimistic. I understand all the venting. I understand it. I feel you. But I'm I'm better, here to try to play some defense to, too. I'm here to try to turn you in the right direction and get a little optimistic here because this is what we got. Well, they better play some defense. That'd, that'd be a little bit different than uh, the times last year. Where you know who had a better def- who had a better defense last year, BYU or Kentucky? I'm going to assume BYU because I think there's a lot of teams that had better defenses than Kentucky last year. BYU <laughs> so, had a better defense. Yeah. Um, all right, Mother Carol. If you're new to the chat here, which I'm sure we have a lot, Mother Carol has supported the the channel for many days. And um, any effect on $5 Super Chat, we appreciate this. Um, any effect on Reed Shepard's decision, uh, Max, thoughts on this? Sorry that we got a lot of stuff coming in here. Yeah, I think it, there's been, there was like rumblings about it before you know, eh, maybe Reed Shepard comes back, you know, maybe. And, and now I think there's there's definitely a little bit of a there's a little bit of movement to it. Matt Jones was talking about it last night. I haven't seen anything on the uh, on the Discord, the Julie Donovan Discord, but um, I don't. I would keep an eye on it. I think there's definitely some legs to it. Can I, can I just tell you how incredible it is right now that we're having this live stream and that we're talking like we're able to have comments like this. Because John Calipari is the coach at Arkansas now, have we have we all let that sort of settle in just yet? Is everyone aware like this is actually a thing? This is not like some kind of dream. Um, we we were gonna have these comments all year, Max. Like because I don't know if you know John Calipari is the coach at Arkansas, so just I mean this is just nuts, right? This whole thing is nuts. But anyways, so yeah. It's- I mean, I can't remember a coaching cycle like this. I never, yeah, and Christian, yeah, right here. <laughs> this is all because of SMU. <laughs> That's what started this whole thing was That's SMU. So, chain reaction. That's what happens. So, uh, I don't know. But, um, all right, let me find some other stuff here. All right, guys, boy, this I can't wait to see the responses on this. Grade the Mark Pope hire to Kentucky in the chat. Give me your grade. You want to talk about there's going to be be more. Uh, I can already expect what the grade's going to be. But what else we got, Max? Um, I'm sure there's some stuff I'm forgetting, but we've got a gazillion comments. And so. Yeah, there is there is definitely some stuff we're forgetting. And I just 
can't think right now. Let's see the we're getting the Another grades thing. come in. We got a lot of B's. What else we got? A lot of F's. <laughs> a lot of C's. Well, what would you well, grade, I mean, Max? Come on. This this is what I'll I, I would say. My initial reaction when the news first broke, I would say like C around there, you know, but now that I've I've looked into it, maybe a C plus, <laughs> B minus. Wow. <laughs> Taking well, like, put I mean, it put it this way. Who are the other options right now? Honestly. On it, like like give me an honest who because Scott Drew says no. Dan Hurley says no. You got to wait at least a week for Billy Donovan. Who? Wh what else are we working with here? I mean, there's not. It's not like there's national champion coaches just falling from the sky here. Yeah, I mean, I I've, I've said you know when we when we had this conversation and calm down, Alabama fans. I realized that he quickly came out and said he wasn't. But I said if you're asking me who I would hire at Kentucky. And I said, give me a top three list. I had two SEC coaches on there. I had Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl. And then I said, your third could be that combination of Billy Donovan, if you think you can go after Hurley. I don't even know if we talked about Scott Drew a lot at the time. I'm sure we probably mentioned him as like one that would make sense. But I don't think we – because, again, that was a, right after the Cal to Arkansas thing. Um, so, I I don't know. Like, I just – it, I feel like all of these, all the time in these coaching, we, we want to be able to grade it. Like it's incomplete. Like we don't know. Like it's, it's one where I know the frustration too with Barnhart. Like that's the problem too for Kentucky fans is they don't have, and not everyone as always, but it's the confidence level in Mitch Barnhart, I think is something that has also frustrated them. And I feel like it's another situation where if he doesn't get this one right, and, and what was it? Someone pointed out last night, he's made what, three basketball hires Billy Gillespie John Calipari Mark Pope the Cal one as they talked about were kind of that wasn't necessarily his choice um and so again you kind of you know you can play that game and say well what does he get right what has he not gotten right and so I don't know I I thought you know Bruce Pearl would have been a, a great option maybe at this point don't know if that was even reasonable based on the contract he has there, but I'm just throwing out names that I, you know, certainly could have understand. But here's the difference, right? Between Bruce Pearl, Dan Hurley, Scott Drew, and Mark Pope. There is obvious difference in terms of NCAA tournament accolades, difference in terms of years of coaching, all that. But the difference for Mark Pope that is in his advantage, in my opinion, is that what we said earlier, he is a Kentucky guy. And he is, I think, will be able to rally parts of that fan base. Maybe not everyone's going to buy into it. Trust me, we see the comments. But I think there, there is something to that when you get to this point. And I don't know. Um, I just well, we'll find out. It's about building the roster. That's what it comes down to. He's got to yeah. be able to recruit. He's got to be able to build a roster that can win in this SEC landscape when you're coaching against – Programs that are now Final Four programs: Auburn, Alabama. Um, you know, obviously Tennessee has not gotten to the Final Four. They get to the Elite Eight this year. We know how good they are. Um, you know, you keep going down the line, right? Florida's surging. Other programs that I'm just going to completely forget about: South Carolina, they're surging. Um, there, there's just a lot of things where in Texas and Oklahoma are joining. So it's it's a grind, man. So one thing I want to add is because I was questioning my, I, I had this question myself was like, why, why not just give Patino a shout or why not give, you know, one of these older guys a shout. I don't think Kentucky wants a, a three year guy. Age. I don't, yeah. I think, you age know, is a big factor. Mark Pope's 51, you know, he could be there for however, I mean, depends on success, obviously. But what I'm trying to say is they didn't want to, they didn't want a guy with, you know, three, four years left in the tank is, is what I, I took from that. Too old. Yeah, Patino too old. Yep. I mean, um, Pope's got Patino's blessing, right? So yeah. that'll also speak to a certain part of the fan base. It won't speak to everyone, but it will speak to a certain part of the fan base who will be willing to support this thing from day one. So, yeah. I mean, I, I know, again, like, we are probably doing a much different live stream than you 
have seen in spaces than you've seen. That's just the way we do things. We're not just going to sit here and say, this guy's going to go 0-35 next year. Because guess what? He's not going to go 0-35 next year. And so he'll build a talented team, but will he build the kind of team that you need to win in March? Like, that's what it comes down to for Kentucky. Kentucky fans, would you be happy just with a regular season title this year and going out in the first or second round of the NCAA tournament? Honest answer. Because I know the answer to that. (laughs) It wouldn't be enough, would it, Max? I don't think it would be enough for most people to say, let's go win the SEC. It's a step forward, right, winning the SEC, because we've seen Alabama's captured that a couple times now. Tennessee, Auburn in recent years. What, LSU won it several years. Like, But is that going to be enough? I don't think it's still about the tournament success. But maybe, hey, if you go out and win the SEC, and win the SEC regular season championship this year, then you're going to feel like, all right, even if we go out in the NCAA tournament early, hey, this guy came in in year one, won the SEC title in a loaded SEC So it's improvement. Yeah, maybe it's just this. Maybe this is what it's about. Just find a way to improve. Whatever steps you need to take, find a way to improve on it. Let's see how long it takes. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I know, like, you know, an Elite Eight, a Final Four would, oh, that would just be incredible. But he was top 20 in Ken Palm this year in his first year in the, the Big 12. They had the 14th offense and the 60th defense. You come in here, upgrading talent, upgrading pretty much everything. Um, you're t- say you're top 15 in Ken Palm the whole season with like a top 15 offense. I mean, you're gonna be you're gonna be a top 25 team the entire year if if that's what we're talking about. Um, so I know the the postseason success is ultimately gonna be what he's graded on, but. I mean, if he can just if he can be a, a top fifteen team here, I mean, we're on the right path, right? Yeah, I would say so. It's, I mean, as we said, you could. I don't know that. That's what I'm just trying to figure out. I guess in my mind is, what's the difference between Mark Pope and John Calipari? What is the difference going to be? And to me, it's like I don't know how many fans necessarily are just going to judge that on. I mean, I think it's all judged on the tournament. Like, I just feel like that's the only way we're going to fully be able to say, hey, Mark Pope is a definite upgrade over John Calipari. And people said, hey, maybe it's just winning the SEC tournament, right? Because think about all we talked about for years is when you go into the SEC tournament, Kentucky's always one of the favorites, right? They have to be. But then you see the lack of success they've had in the tournament the past couple of years and how that carried over, which I brought up the comment there just a second ago about how maybe that just carried over the NCAA tournament where – Hey, it just didn't really, you know, but, but then you could also, I guess, flip it and say, well, Auburn won it and they went out in the first round. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like it's to me, the only thing that's going to separate these two is going to be if Mark Pope gets them consistently beyond the first week in the NCAA tournament. I think that's the only way people are going to be pleased and happy all when all is said and done. But guess what? We're not going to know the answer to that (laughs) until, you know, a year from now, really. But, you know, we'll see because, that's the thing, right? That the rosters didn't lack talent. So I mean, I don't know. It's it's a tricky it's a tricky deal. So but I mean, when you look at his when you look at his roster from this this past year, I mean there's a few guys he could bring over and we're looking at like having four guys that shoot like north of like 40% of three. Like this offense, I'm just thinking about it and and trying to like piece together a few different lineup options. I mean, this offense could be really, really good. And I just I keep going back to to Twitter, try to get updates on this NIL. I mean, guys, Calipari just got rumored to have what about like five plus mil? Uh, he's for... gonna have. I was laughing the other day when someone said he's not gonna have the resources at Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding you me? So much. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if everyone's saying like, "Oh, Calipari is gonna, you know, have just the whole world. He can build a roster with whatever he wants. It's just him for the taking." Mark Pope has been not even like I don't even think we've got an official announcement. He's already been pledged four million for NIL. I mean, guys, like I think Kansas, I think their NIL uh, was like four point six million last year. Kansas, had yeah, look at their team. Like you can put together. Oh, a lot with four million plus. 
can get some studs on this team for sure. Yeah. Well, just to quickly circle back to this. Yeah, I, I get it. Like the, he didn't leave, but at the same time, like you're going to ultimately be judged on the guy that was there before you. And I think that was kind of the point was that I think like it or not, he is going to be compared to the previous coach, even though yes, ultimately didn't have a choice because Cal did leave. Cal was the one that left. Let's remember that he didn't get fired. He left, but yeah. So I, I think that that is a, an interesting, yeah, I agree with that. So, um, <laughs> Let me get to this one real quick. I told you, Max, what's the first thing I said to you guys in the in the chat? I said, if he just gets to coach basketball, I said, I think Mark Pope will be fine. As long as it doesn't become, you know, because I think that's it. And everyone kind of looked at Cal as in a different way, right? So, um, yeah, I, I think that's just, just let Mark Pope coach basketball. I think they'll be okay. I really do. I know not everyone wants to hear that, but I think they'll be okay. I think he's a good basketball coach, but there's a lot that comes along with Kentucky jobs sometimes, and there's a lot of pressure as we know. So um, we'll find out. But there was another one I wanted to bring up here from Cade. This is the greatest greatest question we've had. You know why? Who makes it further the first year Arkansas or Kentucky? Neither team has a roster at this point, <laughs> so I have no idea. It's it's Max and I were laughing about this before we came on. We're like, do we, do we need to start putting together like way too early SEC rankings for next year? Are you kidding me? We don't know who's on half these 90% of the rosters. Like it's so funny though, isn't it? Like how we used to love like putting out rankings right after the previous season. You can't even think about doing that now because <laughs> you don't know who's on the roster. So I thought I'm, I'm doing this like off season project where I d- I'm listing out like a bunch of starting lineups for the teams. Like, I don't know, maybe two to three different you can play small ball you can play big shooting lineup defensive lineup whatever to you know give you a feel for what the team might look like on the on the floor i tried to start it i'm like why am i even starting this right now i i don't know who's playing crazy that's the thing like who's going to be on kentucky's roster do we know no I mean, Mark Pope's going to have to say the same thing as Cal did. Like, I talked to my team. There were, what, two of them, three of them, maybe. Like, that's where we are. So, I am curious to see what – because here's the thing, right? And, again, I talk about just how we're in a bizarre world here. Yeah. Where it's it's thinking about, okay, who who joins Cal at Arkansas? What is Pope's first priority, which I think we know what his first priority would be, if that's an option. Um, We've already talked about that. But – yeah, like I'm curious to see who winds up where here because that's the that's the most interesting part of this whole equation is knowing how quickly you have to build your roster now. And I mean, think about it too. Like Kentucky's a little further along for people. Like some people got a head start two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And so it's a little bit later in the process now, but it is Kentucky and transfers are still going at a rapid pace, right? We saw Ryland Griffin last night. They're gonna, it's gonna Alabama. pick up. It's gonna pick yeah. up here like crazy. Yeah. yeah. So. And that's another thing, Blake. Everyone's saying like, no patience. Why wouldn't you wait for Billy Donovan? Say you say you do wait. Say you do wait for Billy. And he and he, you know, he ends up winning the first game, winning his first playing game, and you end up hiring him. And he, you know, he gets to Lexington around like the twentieth. All the biggest names in the portal might be. <laughs> There's another one. Wade Taylor's out there for those who didn't see. Wade Taylor is uh, out on, I mean, on the board. That, so Donovan's got he's got to come in, put his staff together, get everything going. You might not be like putting together a roster until like starting in May. You might be get like that's just. I feel like. Oh, I just that's that's a lot. It's a big risk. I mean, we're already starting late here. You know. I mean, here's here's a question. Yeah. For the chat. For the chat. Here you go. Who's a better basketball coach? Mark Pope or John Calipari? <laughs> basketball. Basketball coach. Mm-hmm. While we're while we're chewing on that one, let me get to something else here. There was something we had. Oh yeah, we had a nine ninety nine super chat. Ooh. From Pressure Washing by Sterling. We Sterling, we appreciate this. Um uh, nine ninety nine on the super chat. Nice. Full lineup of former player assistant coaches that want to get the program back where it should be, but Stacy on the staff too. Hey, 
I mean, that's again, if you're bringing in the connection, that who was on Mark Pope's staff at BYU, Max? Let's look that up because I, I couldn't tell you. But um, I wish Ken Palm showed you the assistants. Look at the, we got an interesting comment split here on who the better basketball coach is. Yeah. Which is what I expected. I expected this to be a little. A little close. Now, we're not going to be able to add here. You know, you guys know one thing we can't do at Southeast 14 is math. But I'm going to assume this thing's about 50-50 right now in the chats. We had about 50 come in. And so, interesting. Interesting thought. So, Wow. Seeing some, like, iffy ones. I'm seeing some most definitely Cal, some most <laughs> definitely Pope. <laughs> Very interesting, isn't it? So, I thought it'd be... Because Ooh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. It's a little long, but I think this is nice. There you go. Yeah. So B Dub says he's very much a progressive X's and O's guy. In a lot of ways, the very opposite of everything we grew to despise about Cal. He will get the guys that are gritty and fight and stay for two to three years. I think that's why I asked the question is because there yes. is a difference right in terms of the X's and O's, in my opinion. And I think that is where, if you talk about aside from the tournament, lack of tournament success for me one of the biggest frustrations from kentucky fans that we heard about cal over the past however many years now has yeah. been the lack of sort of evolution offensively in the x's and o's thing now this year was a big change like we said they were way more a little bit you know free-flowing he kind of opened things up a little bit it wasn't just one guy dribbles four guys stand around which it felt like that used to just get them bogged down time and time again but yes like i would I think there is something to this thought that X's and O's wise, Mark Pope seems to be a guy that probably could have more success, let's say, in the next 10 years in terms of how the game is evolving. And so that is that is an interesting part, but that's not all the game's about either. <laughs> like you have to also be able to do the other things. And as we said, that's where I can understand why people would say Cal because he obviously has a much longer track record. And it's a track record, like it or not, of a lot of wins. And yes, talent has helped him get there. So that's why I thought it was it was an intriguing question because I can see both arguments on each side in terms of where these guys are at right now. So, And also, I, I didn't put too much weight into it at first, but I've seen a few comments say, well, why didn't we, I, I, I touched on it earlier, but why didn't we, why didn't we go after Patino? You know, I feel like people have a lot of, you know, hold Patino in a in a high category. Well, Patino said, my guy's Mark Pope. Go get him. So it's like, you know, do you trust do you trust a Hall of Fame level national championship winning coach? Because he said he said, go get Mark Pope. That's my guy. That's your guy right there. That's got to hold a little bit of value. No. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> It's, but I guess that that's also an interesting question. Like Kentucky fans, would you have taken Rick Pitino or Mark Pope right now? Like that's also, and and I think I know the answer to this. Um, but like it's just, it's so wild, man. Because we knew this was the job that, as we said, the domino effect in the coaching carousel, the way it worked out. Like if Kentucky became available, we're thinking, man, what happens if? Again, we're not necessarily saying this, but the discussion is. What happens if Dan Hurley leaves for this? Or what happens if Scott Drew leaves? And, you know, and you're thinking, well, now it's like, okay, nothing against like the BYU job, but like it's much different to where it seems like the coaching carousel is not going to be as chaotic now. Um, so, yeah. But, but I think what Max said earlier, we're getting a lot of interesting responses on the, the Patino versus Pope thing, but yeah. it's the age thing, as Max brought up earlier. Yep. I think that, you know, that's something interesting that. I'll just say I'm excited for this, whatever you want to call it, introductory press conference ceremony, whatever it is. I'm telling you, he's gonna he's gonna do very well. He's gonna do very well in this press conference. He's gonna, I, I think he's gonna win a lot of people over uh, in this by what he's gonna say. He, it's all, I don't know how much, but I just, I know he's fired up, and I just like I said earlier, I just respect. I respect him a lot because to take this job and to know that the know what the reaction is going to be in the moment and, and understand the pressure of the situation. Whew. I, there's a lot of people that wouldn't take it. 
I'll tell, I'll tell you that. There's a lot of people that wouldn't take it in this situation. Mark Pope saying, bring it on. And I love that. I love that. You get me fired up. I don't know if we, we got this from Mother Carol earlier, but we may. Have, I know you mentioned it, Max, but I don't know if we got to the super chat. We appreciate the $2 super chat. But what was the final, the final Ken Palm ranking? Yeah. So BYU came in at 18th. Kentucky was 23rd. Uh, the offense for BYU was 14th. Kentucky was 7th. But then the defense was the big difference. BYU was 60th. Uh, Kentucky was 109th. So that's where you see that you see that jump, um, and you you can't say that it was it was from a you know beating up on lowly WCC teams. Nope, right there, right there in the uh, what everyone likes to call one of the best conferences, Big Twelve. I I have my opinions on that, um, but I mean, look at what he did in the Big Twelve last year. Went ten and eight, tied with Kansas, and it was a down year for Kansas, but right up there. The Big Twelve. Well, if you wanna if you wanna use this for an expectation of maybe style of play moving forward. <laughs> Alabama made it to the final four, right? We talked about how many threes they shot. Twenty nine point nine per game was the final oh, yeah. number. Now part of that was I think the last game against UConn, they didn't shoot as many as they usually do, and that brought it down a little bit. But you know, who was the who was the second highest three point shooting team in the country in terms of volume? That was BYU. Like they shot 32 threes a game. So if you're a Kentucky fan, you want to get back to the days uh, where you got, you know, Tony Delk and Shepard out there bombing threes. I mean, it's kind of been a trend, I guess, Max. I'd have to look back at the recent years other than this one for Mark Pope. But I mean, at least this past year, they were a team that it was all about the three point shot. I go back the year before, it wasn't really that way at all. Um, I'm looking back here, it's pretty even before this year. So I don't know. I mean, obviously roster construction has something to do with that, but man, they were, it was a dramatic difference. 41% of their total points this past year came from three. That was second in the country, which I'm going to assume number one was North Florida. Yeah. Who took the most three point attempts um, in the country. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get a, the offense is, it's, it looks good too. It just looks good. You know how when you watch UConn and you're just like, geez, how do you how do you guard this? I'm not I'm not saying it's UConn's offense, but it's just it's fun. It's it's attack, close out, kick out, take the open shot, pump fake, it cutters. They likes to play um that big man up on the top. I can just I'm I'm picturing Big Z playing that Ali Khalifa role. I feel like that's just just a perfect situation for Big Z kind of playing that point big man, passer, shooter. I know I know the track record isn't there, but he, he with the NIL, he has the money to put together put together a powerful offensive roster. It, it could be really fun. Yeah, Big Baller Brett. Yeah, there was a team. It was three teams that took more threes in Alabama this year. Hard to believe. North Florida, BYU, and, and Charleston, who, of course, Alabama played in the first round. So – those were all teams that took more threes in Alabama. Um, so, yeah, pretty wild to think about. But there you go. So Here's um, a good comment. Um, no one stops moving. That's that's what I meant with that's what I meant with the comparison of UConn. They're just they're flying all the time. They're just flying, whipping around screens. It's a fun offense. I mean, you watch if you watch the Big Twelve at all, you would know that this past year um, when I when the SEC wasn't on, I course i'm watching it a lot of iowa state houston games a lot of uh byu iowa state games those gritty defenses byu still runs that offense uh they i mean they they won at the fog this last year they won at kansas they beat baylor beat iowa state beat san diego state some good some good good wins there i know they fell up short against duquesne um, but still not everyone goes into Kansas and comes away with a win in their first year in the big 12. We're trying to be optimistic here. I know some people don't like us for that, but <laughs> this is all we can do. All we can give you is what we see. And we know we the Kentucky fans who were fully invested in one of the other hires, people that have won national championships before. And now you're getting a guy who's not won a tournament game. 
I mean, if we just say that, it sounds yeah. completely ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's always a tougher, it's more, it has to be more nuanced than that. It can't just be as basic as that. And certainly you have to look at other things. Um, so I don't know. Um, that's kind of where we are. Be truthful. Well, we, we've said all the truthful things. Like yeah. he hasn't won a tournament game. We've, we've said that. Um, Cal, as we said, has accomplished way more in his career. There's no question. Um, yep. And and we also brought up, I think, the fact that here's the deal. Like we said, I don't. I said my expectation is I don't think we can just say it's okay for him to have three years to figure this out. It's not. No. Like he has to figure this out now. Yes. And if he doesn't, this will look. We will look back on this and say this was not the right hire. And many people are saying well, we already know it's not the right hire. Well, how do you know? <laughs> like yeah. he hasn't coached the game yet. But I get it. Like the optics of it, as Max said earlier, I think it's just it's so different because you are gauging his resume versus all the names that were at the top. And that started with, remember where this whole thing started. It was Billy Donovan, Dan Hurley, Scott Drew, Bruce Pearl, Nate Oates, who else? Like all guys who have been to Final Fours. <laughs> and so you're now doing that for a guy who has not won an NCAA tournament game. So 80s rocker, I'm with you, I get it. We're doing our best, but we try to play both sides here. Yeah, I mean, if that if you if you want to just draw your conclusions from that and and go into it with you know we're going backwards we're not going to do anything blah 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 sure i'm not going to it's warranted i understand um but all i'm doing is giving you the path to where hey maybe this will work out because of x y and z that's all that's all well We've got to see the roster he puts together. As we yeah. said, that's what this all comes down to is what's the roster look like in year one? Because it doesn't, we're not projecting ahead to year two. What does the roster look like in year one? How does he build this roster? If he has the NIL scenario, then then so be it. So it's fine. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what Thanks, happens Neil. if. I mean, it's only the 15th time I've been called Eminem here. I feel like I need to start rapping, Max. Like, this is just. I feel like we've reached the point where I need to start rapping on some of these things. So maybe that's what, would you like to hear that, Max? I think I would probably just like shut my computer off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, what happens What happens if this, if this is the scenario? Mark Pope's top 15 in Ken Palm all year takes him to a sweet 16. One of the best, one of the best three point shooting teams in the nation. Super fun offense. Finished top half the SEC. Are we are we saying this is a bad hire then? Because I'm not. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I we'll see. So I just I don't know. I, I realize that this is what we do in this era now, and I mean, what I guess we could just come out and say, hey, they're not. He's not going to win. It's over. Shut the program down. But that's just not what. We're, if, if you've watched our stuff before, this is not what we do. So, um, going to have to prove it. And it all comes down to the roster you build. And I said, I don't think this is a three- to four-year plan. I think he's got to win now. If he doesn't, then all of the, the you know, it's, it's warranted at that point. So, I don't think this is a, we're going to give this guy 10 years because he gets, he's a Kentucky guy. I just don't think that's the case. Um He's got to well, win. He's got to win quick. So you you give any coach over four million in NIL, yeah, you, you better be winning. You better be winning. I mean, do you think? I don't know. I don't have the numbers. It, that I guarantee is NIL at BYU. Plus, with the recruiting restrictions that come with being at BYU, was nowhere close to four million. Let's just. I understand all of the all of the reaction. But get let them let them put together a roster, and then let's see let's see what our opinions are going into the going into the season. He puts together, you know, one of the top transfer classes, retains a few of the freshmen, and we're looking at a a, a stacked roster. First time Mark Pope's had did probably this is probably going to be the best roster Mark Pope's ever had. If we're thinking uh, about it, it better be. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be his most talented team ever. Let's see what he does with it. 
I, I don't look. I don't. I don't disagree with this at all. I. I don't disagree. I think that was our expectation. Was that we thought that there was going to be a more long term proven coach that would be hired, yeah. and yeah, just I guess either. I mean, uh, we saw some of the reports out there. Like there were just certain guys they just never reached out to, and. I think if you're a Kentucky fan, you can certainly probably be a little frustrated about that because even if it's just reaching out to just say, hey, would there be any interest here whatsoever? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that you have every right to be frustrated if there are certain guys that they did not reach out to that felt like, again, you don't, you never know. Like, it's, it's almost like the transfer portal, right? We used to joke about how Arkansas would reach out to every player in the transfer portal, you know, when Musk was there. But now it's like, why not? Like, why wouldn't you just take a shot and see if there's anything there that could connect together and make this work? And so I, I think that's what's interesting, too, about this whole thing. So, yeah. of course, we'll never know the full story on who they did and who did not contact. Sure, there will be reports out there on certain guys. But, yeah, like you'd love to see that list. Um, but I mean, looking back at his rosters, I think the best big man he's ever had was one year of Matt Harms. I mean, let's go. Give this guy some some top talent and and see what he can do with it. I just I keep getting more and more excited now. I'm so I'm I'm so fired up for this now. Give the guy a chance. I love an underdog story. Give him a chance. We just love the game. If you're just joining in for the first time, and trust me, we see a lot of new names in the chat. We cover SEC basketball. Um you know, pretty much on a daily basis. We did during the season. We'll certainly be doing a lot more in the off season as well and so hit that subscribe button on the way out so we're gonna hop off here shortly but uh, we appreciate um yeah i mean it's we've got 1200 people watching here we know why because kentucky just made a hire and there are gonna be people that <laughs> do not love some of the things that um mark pope maybe is going to bring to the table with the lack of success others are going to give him a chance that's where we are and so there you have it but anything else max if the boosters and the donors, if they believe in Mark Pope, which they do, then I'm going to follow suit. That's what I'll say. All right. Hit the subscribe button on your way out or not. Either one. Uh, hit the like button <laughs> if you <laughs> enjoy uh, what we do here at Southeast of 14. We appreciate all the familiar faces and um, all that. For the record, who's our favorite team? Don't ask Max. Max's favorite team is everyone in the SEC. Although Mississippi State and bully ball is Max's flavor of teams. So he likes bully ball. Um, so big Cam Matthews guy here. So I grew up, I grew up a Duke fan. After that program has gone to the gutters, I've left them in the dust. Do not like where they're at right now. No backbone, no bully. I'm a boy ball guy. I like, I like football on a basketball court. <laughs> That's what I like. This is, this is my favorite comment coming off the Eminem stuff earlier, which again, I always yes. love when you guys say that. It, I just, I get a kick out of it, but he can't. So could, is that a situation now where me and Mark Pope, boy, Kentucky fans will not, they will not find that very, um, I mean, Dar Daryl said it, maybe that's it, right? Like maybe the, the rap thing does not work well. So um, anyways, all right, guys, we appreciate you watching. Uh, we're going to get on to doing videos on transfers. So, Trust me, if you're a Kentucky fan, you're an Arkansas fan, we'll be doing plenty of videos on you guys because we talk about every SEC basketball transfer that's out there. So we will do that, and, um, yeah, we'll have fun with it. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching as always. Check out our friends at Bet Online, as we said, and um, we will talk to you again here soon with, I'm sure, many transfer videos looking yep. at uh, the new rosters for both John Calipari at Arkansas and Mark Pope at Kentucky. <laughs>